<laughs> Good morning and welcome to another episode of I don't know what what it do. We... <laughs> Good morning and welcome to another episode of Paramedics for You Too. My name is Zach and this is Stacy and uh, we're going to introduce ourselves since this is our first episode ever. Um, we both work in Tennessee. I'm a critical care paramedic with a service here. I have um, State of Tennessee Critical Care, and I am a nationally registered paramedic, which sounds exciting, but it's not. <laughs> I've been doing this for about eight years, and... I have I'm a paramedic basic uh, for the state of Tennessee at the same service that will go unnamed, uh, and I do not have any desire to ever be critical care. <laughs> well, why don't but you want to be critical care? It's so much fun don't no. understand. In today's episode, we're going to be talking to you about just about the basic history of EMS. By no means is this the full history or is this even a scratching the surface, but we didn't want to bore you too much. Um, EMS got started during the Civil War, um, mostly with nurses, our buddies. Everybody should be nice to their nurses. We all work together in a chain. Um, but it started the Civil War with nurses treating patients out in the field, and it progresses most of the time through each war. We get more skills that are kind of passed down to us from the military as well as new medications and new ways of doing treatments. Especially Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam, Vietnam was a big one. Really picked up. Um, and then we had, you know, got to like the 1960s and 70s and we had, you know, car wrecks and people would load and grow, go and grab them and throw them in the hearse and either they went to the hospital or they went to the funeral home. Literally, literally hearses, not true ambulances. So. Yeah, and in the same time, the in the 50s and 60s, they were also kind of making some more regulated ways of doing CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So that kind of helped promote people actually being trained to treat patients out in the field. Um, the National Highway Safety Act of 1966 um, created the DOT, or the Department of Transportation, which still oversees a majority of the needs for EMS agencies around the country. Doesn't make sense, but... Then we have the Pittsburgh Freedom House. Uh, that's actually pretty not well known, and I don't think it's taught in school. I didn't know about it until actually you mentioned it, which I think is kind of sad because yeah. you know it was actually it actually became the gold standard. Yeah, and I didn't get taught it in school. I learned it online through other paramedics on Facebook. I think it was, but it was a black inner city community that kind of made an EMS service for themselves. And like he said, it became the gold standard and kind of what we do today. And yeah. So Most of the paramedic um, schools that actually started after that era actually based a lot of their training on how the um, Pittsburgh Freedom House Ambulance Service was ran and how they did their training in the beginning. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I thought that cool. was awesome. So, so yeah. But uh, that brings us to more of today's, today's setup, which is not, there's no clear way to define what EMS is today, which is part of our problem in EMS. Um, so, you, so you have like volunteers and you have firehouses and then you've got true EMS and you got private EMS. Um, so it's hard to define exactly what EMS is at this point. Yeah, there's, it, there's a lot of um, variation. So like I, both of us work in Tennessee, so we know that from county to county things change. Um, it's not like there is just a set way to do things through the state of Tennessee. The state of Tennessee has its set of protocols, but your medical director who is over your ambulance service for your county or your city, whichever way it goes, can actually make changes to those and restrict what you can do or expand what you can do in the field depending on what they feel comfortable with. And um, unlike nursing where it's kind of just come together and it's an older profession so they are able to have a more localized way of doing things and they can actually it expands from state to state that's why there's like what a the nursing license comes with a it's like 30 something states that if you're yeah. licensed in one of those 30 something states you're licensed in the other 30 something states. yeah multi-state licensure right but for paramedics it's a little bit more difficult since it varies so much so tune in next week <laughs> we will be talking about the different licensure levels of ems which is going to be pretty much anything pre-hospital so we'll be talking about emr first and then we'll be talking about EMT basic, AEMT, which is advanced EMT, and then paramedic. Um, as we go each of, over each of those licensures, we'll talk kind of how they vary from state to state because not all states adhere to national registry. 
Tennessee has critical care, whereas some other states do not. Um, but if that sounds like something interested, please, down below. Sorry, I'm not used to this camera <laughs> yet. This is fantastic. Like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. No, I, I, <laughs> and actually, with that program, it's super easy just to... <laughs>